What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson. Today, joined with my co-host, Will Cohen. The, the Stanley Cup playoffs are officially underway in the background, in my mirror. I can see Carolina versus New York. There's someone in the penalty box right there. Um, it's, it's crazy. Carolina is looking a little bit sloppy right now. Um, who knows? Maybe the Rangers, if they're able to beat the Capitals, might have a date with their fellow New York team in the second round. But in order for that to happen, the Rangers actually need to make it to the second round. They have to beat the Washington Capitals, which that series does start tomorrow afternoon. So very exciting right there. Um, today, we are going to be discussing three players need to step up in order for the Rangers to beat the Washington Capitals. You know, we did three keys to beating the Capitals, like overall as a team. But right now we got three individual players who really need to step up. And this isn't necessarily bad players who need to improve but just some of our bigger names that we have here who really just need to lock in right now and bring that playoff um, energy to the table. Um, so we're going to get right on into that. And before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss a notification, especially so you'll be notified when we go live tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right ahead of game time. Um, if you're watching us on Apple or Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star review. Leave your thoughts down in the comments section below on the three players that we are going to be discussing today. Is there anyone else in your mind that you think really needs to step up or do we pretty much hit the nail on the head as always? Lastly, be sure to follow us on all of the social media platforms at Fireside Rangers for daily Rangers content. And before we really get into things, <laughs> well, how are you doing today? That's a long intro. <laughs> you know, before I, you know, I, uh, before I say anything about you, you know, how I'm doing, I feel like, like as we go on, your intro gets longer and longer. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing. It's just, it's just, it feels like it's, it's getting longer. And it, it does get longer, especially right now, because with the playoffs and the amount of content that are really just pumping out, I got to make sure everyone's up to date on what's happening. I need to make sure that every single person watching this video knows that we are going live tomorrow so they can be there. You know, exactly. no, I, I love it. Like, I mean, I'm not I don't really care if it's long at all. I love it. It's it's awesome. I love hearing you talk, obviously, but I'm doing good today. Um, I'm. <laughs> I got my dog with me here, Bingo, for the third, what, third straight episode. He's laying on the couch next to me. He's passed out. I wish I could do the same. And I got the Islanders and the Hurricanes on the TV. I didn't get to watch the first period. I know it's 1-1. I know Kuznetsov scored. And I don't know who scored the goal for the Islanders. But, yeah, I don't know. You know, it, it's whatever. We got under a little under 24 hours, 20, what, 20 like 21 hours until the oh, game yeah. tomorrow. So, I'm I'm super pumped. I'm very excited. I'm a little upset that there's only two games on today because I feel like I feel like I thought they were gonna have two um two West Coast teams on, but I guess not. I, I know they're saving two of them for Monday, but I'm really excited for tomorrow. I'm 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 excited to talk about this this topic too. This is I'm I'm excited. I just have so much to talk about right now, man. I could talk for hours. <laughs> All right, well, that officially concludes the three and a half minute long intro. So to those of you that are still with us, we appreciate you. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a bit chatty today, but let's get right into the topic. Enough, enough dilly dallying. <laughs> um, the first player who I think really needs to step up in the first round is our boy, Artemi Panarin. He's had a career year. We've talked about him a million times on this channel, especially recently. I feel like ever since the regular season ended and we're talking about all this preparation and series overview and everything. Panarin's name keeps getting brought up. And I think of the three players that we're going to talk about today, his presence um, and him elevating his play into the playoffs, it's probably the most important. I mean, just look back at last season with the Rangers played only seven playoff games. Panarin only had two points, which was only two assists that both came in game one. And then he absolutely just disappeared. Now, you know, again, there, there's the whole narrative that was later revealed, you know, his rocky relationship with Gerard Gallant, then him shaving his head, having an amazing bounce back year. You know, I, we've brought up the stat in the past where ESPN projected him to hit like 80 points this season, and he went and pretty much blew it out of the water, finished with 120, 40 time, 40 point, 40 goal scorer. For the first time in his career, over 100 points for the first time in his career. Amazing season by Panarin. The question that we have left is, can that translate to playoff success? Um, to me, undoubtedly, I am going to say yes. I think he's going to continue his play. He's talked about it a bit. You know, He recognizes that the postseason last year was not ideal. He, he's, he's aware that it went all downhill for him. And just looking at 
interviews and like conferences where he's talking, it seems like his confidence is at an all time high. He's really riding like the high that came with such an incredible regular season. And all he's got to do is just keep doing what he's doing. Keep the confidence up. Don't change anything. And he should be in position to have a pretty incredible postseason run that if the Rangers make it far enough, could possibly end up in a con Smythe win. But we'll get into that in a few weeks, <laughs> that last part there. But talk to me about Panarin, Will. You know, Panarin, he hasn't been open about what happened last year in the playoffs, but he's been, you know, open about how he, he just wants to forget. He doesn't want to talk about it. Um, he he told the beat that he something happened with Gallant last year that in front of the entire team that none of the team, I mean, Panarin and the rest of the team didn't like. And and we know that he's had a rocky, he had a rocky relationship with, with Gerard Gallant, but you know, this year he just looks a lot more, he looked a lot more relaxed in the, in the regular season. He was shooting the puck a lot more. Obviously he came into the season wanting to do that. Um, and he did. And, and I think that really is going to carry over into, I, well, I said this last year too, but I really think this year it's going to um, go, you know, it's going to transition, translate into the playoffs because in the regular season, he didn't, it didn't seem like he needed space to operate like he did the last two years. Like the last two years, it, he really, he, he really needed space. Like if he didn't have space and obviously in the playoffs, you don't have space, he was screwed. And that's why he didn't do very well in my opinion. And this year it just seems like he's relaxed. He's working into open. He's always you know, creating space for himself. He's doing all the right things. And I, and I really do think it's going to translate into the playoffs, but if he doesn't have a good playoffs, it's going to be a short, it's going to be a short, postseason for the Rangers but I, I just don't see that happening yeah I mean that's what I that's why I'm saying like of the all the players that need to step up you know we're only talking about three today there's a million like every single player on wow. this team needs to step up or just I'm just going through my biggest three I think out of the whole 22 man roster or whatever number we're at right now um, after the call-ups today, <clears throat> Artemi Panarin, the number yeah. one most important player that needs to. I show think he's going to be out for. Ve- I think he's going to be out for vengeance and revenge yeah. this year. That's a and master. That's, that's what we need. That's exactly what we need. Mm-hmm. I hope Panarin has that drive and that dedication that he needs to go out and redeem yeah. himself and take yeah. vengeance on just everyone in the NHL. That mm-hmm. will set up a perfect playoff run for Artemi yeah. Panarin. But <clears throat> the other two players, even though in my opinion aren't as important as Panarin. They are still quite important. So um, we're going to transition into player number two, who, in my opinion, is Jacob Truba. Um, Truba has had his ups and downs this season. You know, there's been times, especially at the beginning of the year, where I said he's the perfect choice for captain and he's playing some of the best hockey of his career. Now, while my stance on his captaincy hasn't changed, I still think he's a phenomenal captain. His play took a like nosedive. Um, towards the end of the season, like uh-huh. him and him and Miller were horrible together. Yeah, now he's terrible. playing. Now he's getting third pairing minutes, playing with um, Eric Gustafson, who again isn't the most ideal partner. But as we move forward to into the playoffs, Jacob Truba really needs to just you know figure it out. Like I know mm-hmm. I said, the video isn't really bad players you need to improve in the playoffs, but th- that does kind of apply to Truba, where you you got to figure it out. You're a captain. You're making eight million dollars a season there's no reason for you to be down with a third pairing i hope just like panarin truba kind of steps up and has this moment of realization where he does need to redeem himself maybe not redemption from something as bad as what panarin did but kind of just go in be our leader be one of our best defensive players stop making stupid mistakes stop taking stupid penalties Mm -hmm. really become the player that we need him to be get down and dirty block shots lay some massive hits set the tone early you know, he's not a big offensive defenseman. We don't need that. We have Adam Fox. We have Keandre Miller. Mm-hmm. Let Jacob Schubert just become that strong, physical, defensive defenseman yeah. and be a phenomenal leader. And walk out of that locker room and get the Rangers a win every single time they hit the ice. Yeah. That's my, it's a little short, but that's my take on Jacob Schubert. He is one of the key players on this team. As much as we bash him, as much as we love him sometimes, he needs to be on his A game. Yeah. You know, I want to just hit on that that sec- that you know, you saying he's on the third pair in minutes. I think from the last game we saw of the season, it's not really the third pair. Like there's not like a one, two, and three. Like I think they're all really balanced. And that's what I kind of like about this. It's 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 not really a demotion for Jacob Truba. And I still but I still do hope that he realizes like, you know, you're de- you're demoted from your regular partner 
And now you're obviously on the third line. With, well, I guess third line. I said I, there weren't, but with Gustafson and and but when he's on his game, and if we see him, if he if he can return to how he was playing in the beginning of the season, I mean he's going to be perfect for playoff hockey. He brings that playoff hockey style of play. You know the big hits. He can score a few goals if he really needs to. I mean I remember I think it was game six against, or no game five against the uh, the Penguins and. He had that beautiful backhander five hole through jar uh for, through the Smith's legs, and I was thinking, damn, that does not look like a Jacob Truba. But if he can do that and he can he can find his game again, it's going to be perfect. Then you're going to have three lines that that are playing that are you know good defensively and that are all on their A games and at the top of their game right now. And and the Rangers haven't had that since the beginning of the year, so that'd be perfect for them come playoff time. So yeah, Jacob Truba. Rocky, but if he can get back to his game and he, at the, from the beginning of the year, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun playoff to watch from him. Oh, yep, Jacob Truba is you either love him or you hate him. Yeah, every Rangers fan at the end of the day, as much as we like to talk smack about him, we all love him. The rest of the NHL, not so much. He's the type of player where you hate him just because he's not on your team. Any other team yeah. is Jacob Truba. I guarantee I would hate that man's guts. <laughs> you know, we talk about Rempe making a big hit that can change a series, but honestly, if Jacob Truba's on his game, he could make one big hit and it could change a series. It could change the momentum in a game. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited to see how he comes out and how if he, you know, he's motivated to to, you know, better his game for the playoffs, but yeah, that it's he's he's one player that does need to step up from the from the end of the year. 1000% and let's yeah. turn transition into the final player that really needs to step up. I'm sure everyone can probably guess who it is just because of like the major like arc that this channel has been on, just bashing them all year. It's number 93. It's me because of Anna Jed. I mean, we talk about it every single episode. It feels like we're a broken record player right now. Zabanajad needs to be on his A game. He needs to start scoring goals. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. been good. You know, we've said it in the past, like, we, I can't hate. As much as I want to hate on him, I really can't because he's scoring a lot of points. He has a lot of assists. Sure, most of them have come on the power play, but point production is point production at the end of the day. The Rangers are scoring goals and they're winning games. His advantage that happens to be a big part of that. Yeah. But in the playoffs, everyone needs to contribute in every single way possible. If it's game seven in the Stanley Cup finals against, like, the Dallas Stars – I, 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 would, step up. I would really prefer if Zibanejad would keep scoring those assists, but then maybe throw in a goal or two, <laughs> especially at even strength. So, I mean, again, I don't, I don't want to like beat a dead horse and just say the same stuff that I've said every single video for the last five games. But Mika Zibanejad, it's the playoffs. You missed Mika March this year. Can we please make it Mika April and Mika May and hopefully Mika June? <laughs> because yeah. I'm like I'm, I'm begging out here. I, I miss the old Mika and the old Kreider. We need that five v five back. I'll be like Panarin can't score everything. You know, yeah. you need some help up there in the top six. So I'm yeah, the line too. But you get what I'm saying. I don't know if you whatever you got to add. <laughs> you know, Mika, I. The Rangers are with, despite Mika not play, having his best season. The Rangers went out and won the they they captured a Presidents Trophy, and that's I mean that's honestly pretty impressive. You know, not having the best season from your one C, but man, if he can turn it up in the playoffs, the Rangers are, the Rangers will find it a lot easier to win game, hockey games than 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 not than than they did in the regular season. And you know, we saw. We saw that that very good postseason from Mika in 2022. I mean, he was on a heater. He, I think, I mean, he almost. I think when they got, I think when the Rangers got eliminated, he was still top five in points. I'm pretty sure in the playoffs, he was a point per game that year. And you know, if Mika's on his game, it's it'll. I think it'll be smooth sailing for the Rangers. But he has to find it again. Like he needs to just unload shots. Just keep shooting the puck. He'll find the back of the net. Look what Panarin did this year. He just kept shooting, kept shooting, kept shooting. He found the back of the net 49 times this year. So like, it's a, a shot is bound to go in. So Mika, I think he's the biggest X factor for the Rangers in the playoffs this year. I know it probably should be Panarin, but I think it's Mika because if he can unlock his game and find his game again, the Rangers will have a very easy time come, yeah. come playoff. 100%. Like the Rangers are obviously Stanley Cup contenders. 
every like most of their players are having career years. We won the President's Trophy, like you said. If Mika Zibanejad can turn back the clock and play like he did like two seasons ago, I, I think that elevates us to like a level further than contenders. Like not I mean, saying can, the box, but you know, if he like, can find his game from last year, he's going to be perfect. He's going to be golden in the playoffs. I mean, Chris Kreider always elevates his game in the playoffs. He's a 16 game player. Excuse yeah. me, but. Man, if Mika can find his game, oh, it's going to be a fun playoff for Ranger fans. It's going to be a fun one no matter what, and we'll be sure to cover it. You know, the Stanley Cup playoffs are officially underway. Rangers haven't hit the ice just yet, but they will at 3 p.m. tomorrow. So before I wrap up, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug the stream, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Be there. Ask us questions. We'll answer them. I think Tony might be there. I asked him about it earlier. Oh. That, that should that. entice everyone to join, even if he's not. No, there. But it's not 100%, so I don't want to make any promises. I do know that Fireside Giants is planning something, so it depends on how quickly they finish up over there. Um, but who knows? Well, we're, we're, putting the, we're putting the team back together. It's like the Avengers all coming together for – to face like a Thanos level threat, but instead of Thanos, it's just the Washington Capitals. <laughs> <laughs> Who are very, very much not Thanos. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see though. We've like, we've been, we've been pretty cocky these last few episodes. There's a very good chance that in a week, all the fans will be coming at us for jinxing them. Oh um, God. You know, I knock on wood every single time I say something. No, I clarify that, but Thank you to everyone for watching. That we, Today we might have had the longest intro ever and the longest outro ever. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure that you like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss a notification. If you're watching us on Apple or Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star review. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Whether or not you agree with me or will, we would like to hear your thoughts. Lastly, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers on Instagram, X, and TikTok. Have a good one, and let's go Rangers. Let's go Rangers. Boom, saved it. That was